Let us worship God. God is our refuge, our rock, and our shelter. The Lord is our hope, who rescues us from trouble. God knows us from birth, nurturing us with love and care. Praise be to our God. Praise God at all times. Let us now pray together. You know us, O God. You understand our worries and fears. Open the hearts to your transforming love, that your word may grow within us, building a community that bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things. Amen. Good morning. Today, I want to talk to all of you, and especially the children, about love. Now, I know, I know, some of you are going to say, she's always talking about love, and you're right, because the Bible is filled with stories about love, God's love, Jesus' love, and instructions for how we are to love one another. One of the greatest passages in the Bible about love was actually found in a letter, a letter that Jesus' follower, the Apostle Paul, wrote to the people living in Corinth. And it is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And in this letter, Paul describes some of the characteristics of love. For instance, Paul writes, that love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And he concludes that saying, Love never ends. Well, this morning, it's not surprising that I wanted to talk to you about love because, of course, it's Mother's Day. And on this day, we want to give thanks to all of our mothers and all of the women who have cared and nurtured us over the years. So, like many of you kids at home, I wanted to make something special for my mom, to just tell her how much I love and appreciate her. And so I made a card that I want to share with you. Of course, the front of the card says, Happy Mother's Day. And it's surrounded by hearts 
because of how much I love my mom and all of the women who have just been so caring for me over my life. And so in the card, I wanted to share with everyone some flowers, some beautiful flowers, just like the beautiful woman that my mother is and all of the beautiful women who care and nurture us throughout our lives. And most of all, in my card, I wanted to say thank you for the love that she and others have given to me. Now, I know you want to make a card or something special for your mom today, and I hope you'll do that. Something that's colorful and bright, and maybe with some flowers, that shows how much you love and appreciate your mom and women who care for you. So on this day, would you please join me as we pray and give thanks to God for all of the mothers, all of the women who have so lovingly cared, nurtured, mentored, and guided us through this world. Will you pray with me? Dear God, as we bow our heads today, we give you special thanks for the women in our lives, particularly our mothers, who have always cared and nurtured us, watched over us, and kept us safe, provided us with meals, and taught us how to do so many things. Our mothers and the women who have just made sure that we'd be okay and that we would have good and healthy and joyful lives. So on this day, please bless all of the mothers, all of the women in this world. For we pray this in Jesus' name, the one who taught us how to love one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me, and have a happy Mother's Day.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The current pandemic has exposed the glaring divisions in our country. Two weeks ago, in nearby Orange County, in Huntington Beach, protesters demanded that the beaches be opened. They held signs that read, don't take our freedom, quarantine the sick, not the healthy, and all jobs are essential. And this in a state held up as an example of how to handle the pandemic. I suppose divisions are to be expected in a country with a history such as ours. Our nation was founded on opposing tyranny. The rugged individual was revered as the nation expanded westward. The Gaddiston flag, with its coiled rattlesnake and the words, don't tread on me, has long symbolized American independence and strength. And division is what happens in a democracy. Everyone supposedly has a voice. We guard a person's right to express their opinion. When people voice their opinions, there are going to be differences, and differences lead to divisions. So being a democracy, we should come to expect divisions. It is fair to ask then, when divisions are present, 
What can unify? What will bring people together? We know that citizenship is not enough. Asian Americans are experiencing today what Japanese Americans and Chinese Americans went through in the last century. When the nation's leaders vilify an Asian country, Asians in this country suffer. Simply being an American does not unify. Nor do slogans unify. During this pandemic, we have heard the saying, we are all in this together. While it is true, we are going through this together, it does not go far enough to say we need to set aside our rugged individualism and work together. Leaders, scientists, doctors, citizens, to get through this crisis. You see, to overcome division requires an inward change. Division is a spiritual problem. This is what the Apostle Paul was addressing with the Corinthian church in today's reading. The Corinthian church was in many ways like our nation, headstrong and divided. It was separated over wealth, authority, and morality. To give you one example, the church gathered each week at the home of one of its wealthier members to observe the Lord's Supper. It was preceded by a potluck, but the wealthy people got in line first, leaving the poor members with the scraps. Paul saw this as a symptom of a wider problem. For Paul, what was lacking was a unifying thread that held the different sides of the church together. What was needed was a single belief against which everything else could be held. For Paul, it was clear that love was this unifying thread. Now, when Paul spoke of love, he did not mean it in a sentimental way. It was not the romantic love couples have with each other or the, or the nurturing love between parent and child. In fact, it was not a feeling at all. It was made known through what one did. Love bears patiently with someone who irritates you. It is kind to someone who deserves a kick in the shins. It does not wish you had the job or the house or the car or the wife of someone else. It does not boast about how great you are. Love is mindful of the feelings of others. It does not demand my way or the highway. It does not gloat when your enemy stumbles, but is glad whenever the truth wins out. Love always takes the long view. It believes things will work out in the end. In the church, it does not matter if a person speaks with the soaring words of an orator. If they do not have love, they may as well be clanging a cowbell. If a person has a strong sense of right and wrong, and has the courage to speak truth to power. That person does not have love. 
then their efforts are hollow. If a person gives away all they possess to the poor and even becomes a martyr, if they lack love, their sacrifices will count as nothing. Love is the only thing that matters. Jobs will come and go. Savings and pensions will come and go. Health will come and go. Predictions about what will happen in the future will end when the end finally comes. But the love that is true now will be true at the end. The love that is worth everything now will be the only thing that matters in the end. Love was the running thread in Jesus' life. It is what he expressed when he ate with sinners, welcomed children, fed the hungry, healed the sick, and died on the cross. Jesus brought people together through love. We can act as unifiers in the church and outside the church whenever we welcome those different from us, take the time to listen to those with whom we disagree, refrain from gossip, forgive those who have hurt us, and care for the needs of others. And love can bring us together on a larger scale, even within a nation. I think something like love is leading Sweden through this pandemic. Sweden has been criticized for being lax in the way it has handled the pandemic. They have mandated some measures, but they have not ordered a broad general lockdown. They have not shut down schools for younger children or daycare, and they have not closed down any businesses. People have not been ordered to stay at home. What they have relied on are voluntary measures and individual responsibility. You see, there is a high level of trust between Swedes and also a high level of trust in public authorities. Paul would call such trust love. But such trust needs to be cultivated. That is why we start by seeking to build this trust in the church, by practicing the art of acting out of love. Our hope is that this love will spread like a virus from the church to the community and eventually to the nation and even the world. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of love, who treats us with patience and kindness, we thank you for the assurance of your grace. We know that nothing can separate us from your love. Even if we fled to the farthest part of this earth, you would find us and you would greet us with love. Transform our hearts with your love. Fill us with your spirit as you filled Jesus with your spirit. May we accept others as you accept us. We thank you for those who brought us into this world and for those who raised us. We thank you for the loving sacrifice of mothers. We also pray for forgiveness where forgiveness is needed. We pray for others in their need. Strengthen the hands of those who are sick. Give hope to those who feel desperate. Grant peace where there is turmoil. Comfort those who mourn. We pray for all health care and other essential workers. We pray for an end to this pandemic. We praise you for the gift of faith. We praise you for the light of hope. But above all, we praise you for revealing your great love to us in Jesus in whose name we pray, Amen. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
as Jesus taught us, so now we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. I'm glad we could worship God together in this way. And happy Mother's Day to you. Next week, uh, we will uh, feature a special worship service put together by our conference and our bishop. I hope you will join in that. Go now in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.